which I set up in 2007 and uh, we're here now 11 years. Today we are in conversation with Peter Burns. Peter is making inroads in the international scene now which is really great. I, I just love to see him coming from BFA stage to reaching the international stage. He shows in London, New York and Miami and is getting more and more traction in those markets and um, more and more following. I mean it's a very long road for an artist and it's very very difficult to get art, particularly Irish art, on the international stage because there aren't the supports that are required for it so you have to be very very lucky and fortunately Peter has been. It's my second solo show here in Gallery. I've also done a, a couple of two-person shows and been involved in, in many group exhibitions over the years. This exhibition is called Wayfarer and uh, it refers to a figure sort of that recurs in my work um, over the years. And it's like a, a person travelling on a road. Um, and we just decided, I think Rosemary came up with the title, we decided that it might tie this body of work together. With a lot of my work, I, try, I, I use sort of archetypal themes, um, themes that I draw. I mine art history heavily for the themes, and they're from mythological, biblical subject matter. And I just try and give them my own uh, unique uh, twist, I suppose. The colour is, is often heightened, and I do that to try and make the work um, almost hyper real, well, kind of very, you know, in, engaging. I think it's on the edge of being attractive and uh, sort of not easy to look at as well. I think there's 15 pieces in all in the show. Uh, it's predominantly painting and there are three sculptures also included. So the paintings and the sculptures do interrelate. If you look at some of the paintings you'll see owls and um, various figures and such like that, that relate back to the, to the sculptures. Some of the paintings are quite thickly painted, so they're almost sculptural in feel, and also the sculptures are, are painted, so they're, they're two strands of my practice, but that they've come kind of closer together over the years, to the point where I think they work well together now, interspersed in a, in a show like this. I like to do um, conversations with artists where possible in the gallery so that the exhibition can be marked and so that there's a lasting, um, I suppose, production to do with the show that we can look back on and say, okay, that show happened and this is what it looked like and this is what it was all about. Because sometimes in the arts, I mean, you're competing with a lot of different events and it's determined to make sure it's properly documented. Um, so that hopefully people see this and um, will be able to engage with his work. When you started in your career and you showed here 10 years ago, um, your work was much more allegorical and the references to mythology and, um, you know, art historical references were more tangible. Mm -hmm. And I think you've moved into your own, um, your own sort of, vernacular now it's 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 not as um, readily accessible we'll say you can't decode them with the titles the way you maybe would have your other ones why did murder come into your work about five years ago uh, no, it's a good observation but I like I don't really think of that as being that obscure it's it's pretty much the Cain and Abel thing yeah. so it, you know if, I mean if you're painting things like that now um, Biblical subject matter or um, these kind of archetypes, uh, angels and devils and things like that. How do you paint that and be taken seriously as such? You know, mm -hmm. you have to do it by turning it to a high pitch of engagement. You, you know, it has to be, in my opinion, made absolutely yours. You know, like you have to own it a hundred percent and even more. <laughs> If that makes any sense. Your work as well, something else that changed. When you showed with me first, your biggest piece was like the size of a coaster. Mm. Um, so obviously it's gone up in scale big time. And did you, was that a conscious 
transition or did it how did how do you find what's the difference between working small and working big like uh, well it's just something I wanted to do to you know to, to, as basic as this you, you're trying to push yourself and see see what can you do it might be right it might be right for you and you might go back to working on a certain scale but I didn't want to have not tried it so mm. uh, but I was conscious of I'd seen other painters who kind of made a leap from a small scale to a larger scale and they'd done it too quick as far as I could discern anyway the work was kind of weaker as a result mm -hmm. uh, or like there was something artificial about it so I wanted to give it the time where I could try and get the similar intensity into mm -hmm. the larger pieces mm -hmm. because I paint quite thick and some of them are layer over layer I don't think I've even fully achieved that yet but I just wanted to get them to a point where I felt they were they were you know working to some degree like the smaller pieces because that's how I work and they have to function in a similar sense. Mm -hmm. um, I find working on the bigger ones a bit tedious because they're just, it, 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 I have a small studio and it, it, moving them around is hard. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you have a small painting, you can um, you can have like seven or eight on the go. And, and it's just, you know, brass tacks of working, it's easier. The questions and answers here from the floor this evening, I, I felt um, there was a real engagement with the work and Peter was very uh, insightful and offered, I think, a good um, access into his work, opened it out for people and made it more interesting. I was very glad to have the opportunity. Um, I, I've done similar things to this in the past, but they've been more in the vein of you know, a PowerPoint uh, where you're on your own talking about your work and I very much welcome the opportunity to talk in a more informal setting with Rosemary because we've had a relationship with artist and gallerist for quite a few years and she's seen my work develop. She'd have unique insight into that and her background in, in, in art and collecting art. Um, also, if things like that go well, you nearly get more out of it as an artist than almost the audience because it makes you think I can get giving you avenues to go down with your, with your work subsequently. Part of the ambition for the gallery at the moment is to establish a residency program for um, international graduates from uh, our college, Irish and international, and um, to offer two studio spaces for two artists at a time, a total of four artists per year. And on foot of that, to offer ex an exhibition opportunity to one of those artists here in the gallery which would act then as a platform for the artists in Ireland and hopefully propel them towards showing in other galleries, other exhibition spaces in the country and also a way for me to keep my finger on the pulse internationally with what's coming out of art schools in um, the US and the UK and throughout Europe. So that would be something I'm quite excited about developing now. Um, other than that, I'm going to keep going as I have been going.